The head of Britain's electronic spy agency, Jeremy Fleming, sounding the alarm about China and its use of technology. He says technology has, quote, become a battleground for control, values, and influence. Fleming goes on to say the CCP and its tech policies serve many purposes. The purposes include controlling China's population, advancing its military, and gaining power and influence abroad. To counter China, Fleming is calling for additional investments in national security technology. Meanwhile, China's President Xi Jinping wants an unprecedented third, third five-year term. Sunday, the CCP will convene its 20th Party Congress. Xi is expected to retain his power as the party leader. National correspondent at The Washington Times, Bill Gertz, joins me. Bill, nice to see you. Let's first talk about the education. Is the U.S. losing sort of the education race against China or not? Well, I'm really surprised by those that report because I know a number of people that uh, have worked as educators, Americans have worked as educators in China, and they say the environment is very, very difficult now. <clears throat> the Chinese government is cracking down on all foreigners. Um, there's a uh, heavy emphasis on nationalism so that uh, there are attacks against foreigners in, in uh, Beijing, verbal or physical as otherwise. So it's uh, people who want to go study in China should find out what it's really like there, and they'll realize that this is a uh, strictly authoritarian communist dictatorship that does not like the United States. All right, President Xi wants a third term, third five-year term. It's unprecedented. Um, who is he? I mean, what can you tell me about him? Yeah, I did a big profile for The Washington Times on Xi Jinping. Um, he's a uh, unreformed communist going back to the Cultural Revolution. When he was just a teenager, his father was purged by Mao and in the anti-rightist campaign to, to root out rightists in the Communist Party. And rather than reject communism as a result of the excesses of the Cultural Revolution, Xi Jinping embraced it and really began his rise within the Communist Party ranks. Uh, he joined the Communist Party in 74, uh, two years before Mao's death and the end of the Cultural Revolution, held a number of regional posts, and then got his big break when there was a corruption scandal in Shanghai and was named party boss in Shanghai. He eventually was added to the nine-member Politburo Standing Committee, the collective dictatorship that rules China, and his fortunes just increased from there to the point where now, uh, this Sunday at the Party Congress, he could be named Chairman Xi, a title that hasn't been held uh, since Mao and his personality cult. You know, you get such an idea of how things change so rapidly, because in 1972, when President Nixon went to China, the whole point was sort of to drive a wedge between the two communist uh, superpowers at the time, China and Russia. And now we see that China and Russia have become such pals, and we seem to be on the outs of this. You know, what has happened? Well, I think it's a fundamental misunderstanding of the character, uh, character of the Chinese Communist Party and its ideology. Um, there was this thought that because the Chinese opposed the Soviet Union, and the reason they opposed the Soviet Union, by the way, was because of Khrushchev denouncing Stalin. Mao was a big supporter of Stalin. So they had a Stalinist view, but they were much more flexible ideologically, and they were able to cooperate with the United States and gain tremendous uh, technology and wealth from the U.S., and uh, now they're reverting back to a kind of neo-Maoism under Xi Jinping. And my theory is that uh, Putin is weak. He's now got himself embroiled in a losing war. And it looks like Xi Jinping wants to re-communize Russia under Chinese-style communism. I think that's what's behind the uh, entente between uh, Beijing and Moscow. Bill Gertz, The Washington Times, thank you.